Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm bringing you my pile of possibilities for Shorty September. So Shorty September is a month-long readathon which takes place in September, which is all about reading short books. It's hosted by Bert from Pastori Time and Heather from Soggy Expat Book Nerd. I'll leave the channels and the announcement videos down below so you can find out more. Um, but I haven't taken part in Shorty September before, but it sounds really fun. And I have a big TBR that I'm trying to get down right now. And many of the books on that TBR are pretty short. Um, so I thought Shorty September would be a good excuse for me to read a lot of the short books on my TBR. So the main point of Shorty September is to read short books um, which I think the host said could be you know under 200 pages under 250 or basically whatever you consider short um, I would say that what I consider to be a short book is probably under 250 pages because a lot of the books I read do tend to be a little bit longer than that um, so basically I have pulled off from my TBR all of the books I have which are under 250 pages um, and I'm just gonna chat about them today and maybe in the course of this pile of possibilities I'll work out what my actual TBR might be. I'm looking forward to all of these um, but I'm probably not gonna read all of them in September because I think I have something like 16 books here um, in this stack. There are also probably some like Victorian novellas I have on ebook uh, which I might end up getting to in shortly September but I think I'll just play that by ear rather than pick out any select ones for that. I think for this pile of possibilities I'm just going to focus on the books that are actually on my physical TBR. So first let me talk through the short non-fiction books I have on my shelves because I have five short works of non-fiction which I might read in shorty September but some of these I will probably save for non-fiction November so we'll see how we go. Um, so one thing I have on my shelves is The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin which I've been meaning to read for ages. I think I will read this in shorty September because it is very short and I have been meaning to get to this for a while. I don't think I've owned the physical copy that long um, but I have been meaning to get to it. In fact I've got a bookmark in the front which obviously was um, <laughs> there from when it was my intention to read it next at some point and then I didn't. This is a modern classic from the 1960s talking about racial injustice in America um, and I always hear amazing things about it. I also um, have loved the one novel I've read by James Baldwin before, Giovanni's Room. And yeah, I think I will try and get to this in September. We also have Bleaker House by Nell Stevens. Um, this is another book that I'm very excited for. Um, so this is Nell Stevens sort of... Um, memoir kind of thing about um trying to become a writer um I think there was something I remember from the last time I opened the book um yeah the um opening the book says this is a work of memory and invention by someone who set out to be a novelist the memoir includes fictionalized characters events and chronologies and the interspersed fiction is just that so I think this is a bit of a cross genre cross form book um but I love Nell Stevens a lot and her books Mrs Gaskell and Me which is another sort of half memoir, half um, novel thing, um, and her fully novel, Briefly a Delicious Life, are two of my favourite books of all time, so I'm sure I will love this. Another pretty short book, um, I think this is probably coming up to 250 pages, so I will try and read this in September, but we'll see how we go. Then I also have um, a Murakami work of non-fiction, this is the novelist as a vocation, um, and this is translated from the Japanese by Philip Gabriel and Ted Goosen. Um, I might read this in shorty September, but I think I'm more likely to pick this up in November. I, in general, have quite like complicated mixed feelings on Murakami. Um, I have enjoyed some of his books and I have really disliked others of his books. In general, I like his writing style, but I don't necessarily like the content. Um, but I haven't read any of his nonfiction before, so this might be quite interesting to read. Um, and I'm always interested in kind of reading books about being a writer. I suppose actually this might be quite an interesting one to read, like Back to Battle Bleaker House. Um, but yeah, this is another sort of one that is, um, yeah, just over 200 pages. So might read this in September, might save it for nonfiction in November, we'll see. And then I have this. This is Once Upon a Tone by Oliver Darkshire, which has the subtitle of The Misadventures of a Rare Bookseller. Um, and this, I think, is probably just under 250 pages again, um, and is what it says on the tin, um, a non-fiction work about being a rare bookseller. I think this will be really interesting and really fun, uh, but I do get this for my birthday in May. I haven't had it very long, so it's probably not as big a priority as some of the other books um, that sit on my physical TBR. So maybe I'll read this in September, but I think this is probably more likely to be a non-fiction November one, we'll see. And then one thing that I think I might try and read in September, um, just because I've meaned to get to it for a while, and I think it'll be a nice and quite different read, um, is this. This is Rooms of Their Own, Where Great Writers Write by Alex Johnson um, and this is just under 200 pages but it's also very heavily illustrated so I don't think it's actually like I don't think the word count will be very long um, and basically this is 
um, a work of non-fiction which um, talks about like where different writers have written over time um, um, and has like illustrations over their homes or like the rooms in which they wrote uh, which I think this will be really interesting so that'll be a fun one and yeah one I might get to in September we'll see and then I have four um, short short story collections which would feel very fitting to read for Shorty September as they're sort of like doubly short um, in the individual stories and in the collections um, so I have this this is the BBC National Short Story Award Award 2022 which has five stories in. I am really keen to read this because um, it is like the short story award from 2022 so I feel like I should try and read this before the end of 2023 um, and this is yeah just under 200 pages um, with five short stories so I'm definitely going to try and read this one in shorty September. And then the other three short story collections I have are all um, classic short stories so we have The Closed Door and Other Stories by Dorothy Whipple. This is a Persephone classic. Dorothy Whipple was an early 20th century British writer um, and she's a writer who's work I have enjoyed before. I've read one of her novels. These short stories are from um, the 1930s and 1940s um, and I'm really looking forward to reading these. Um, I think these will be really good fun and this is again uh, just over 200 pages so yes I think I'm going to try and read this in short of September. I'm definitely going to say I'm going to read too many of these books but I would really like to read this so I'll see how I go. And then another classic short story collection I have is The Cop and the Anthem and Other Stories by O. Henry. This is just over 200 pages um, and the individual stories I think are pretty short. Like, there's quite a lot of stories in it. Um, so maybe even if I don't read the whole thing, I'll read some stories. Um, I've been meaning to read something by O. Henry for ages. He's a very famous American short story writer. So I may or may not get to this in September. We'll see. And then I also have this beautiful... Um, Folio Society book of great short stories um, which is very very stunning it has lots of lovely stories in and I think is just over 200 pages um, and the writing is very big um, so I don't imagine that this will take me very long um, and yeah it's really 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 beautiful um, I definitely have read a couple of the short stories in here before as well but I think they're all ones that I like, so I'll reread them again. Um, I will never pass up the opportunity to reread The Signalman by Charles Dickens or Gooseberries by Anton Chekhov or Bliss by Catherine Mansfield. Many excellent stories in here. I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, and I think I will try and get to this one in September because this is another one that has been on my shelves for a little while. Um, and also it'd be nice to put it up on the red shelf with the other Folio <laughs> Society editions rather than on my TBR shelf so I'll try to get this in September but we'll see. And then I have seven very short novels, uh, most of which are classics actually. Um, so we'll start off with the classics. Here we have Across the River and Into the Trees by Ernest Hemingway. This is um, just over 200 pages but the book is also quite short in height um, so I don't think it's that long. This is a US classic from the 1920s. I don't know whether or not I'll read this in September. This has been on my TBR for a while and so I am kind of meaning to read it and it would be good to get it off my TBR. However, um, I don't know whether or not I'm going to like it. So I've read one book by Ernest Hemingway before, which was The Old Man of the Sea, which I really didn't like. However, I do have a phobia of fish, so um, it maybe wasn't wise of me to start with the Hemingway book, which is about someone chasing a big fish. Um, so maybe I'll get on with this more, um, although um, there are some boats on the front, so that could also spell disaster. Um, but I might try and read this in September, we'll see. It's probably less of a priority in terms of excitement, but more of a priority in terms of this is probably the book in this list that has been on my TBR the longest. Then I also have this. This is Fathers and Sons by Ivan Terzhenev. This is a Russian classic from the 19th century. Um, and this is just under 200 pages long. I've read First Love and a couple of other short stories by Ivan Terzhenev before and really enjoyed them. Um, so I'm curious to read more by him. Um, and Fathers and Sons is one that gets talked about a lot. I think it's about kind of generational divides um, and a son who kind of has less time for tradition than his father. So I think this could be be quite an interesting book and I find 19th century Russian history pretty interesting so I feel like this could be a really interesting read. The next few books I have spoken about pretty recently as I bought them all at a booktuber meetup um, earlier in August at which meetup in fact I was persuaded to take part in Shorty September um, but I'm looking forward to all of these and these are all really short. I think these are probably the shortest books on this list and um, they're all sort of like under 150 pages getting to the 100 page mark so um, I will hopefully try and read them all in September because that would be nice. So here I have Mr. Palomar by Italo Calvino. This is an Italian classic from the 1980s about an eccentric man and his observations on the world so that sounds really interesting um, and this is translated from Italian 
to English by William Weaver. So looking forward to this one. We'll hopefully read it in September. And then another Italian classic I have is this. This is um, The Beautiful Summer by Cevare Pavesi. And this is translated from the Italian by um, W. J. Strachan. This is a coming of age story from the late 1940s um, and I think this would be a really interesting read. Then I also have Untouchable by Milk Raj Anand which is an Indian classic from the 1930s which is all about um, class and caste and someone who is right at the bottom of society kind of looking at one day in his life. I'm really looking forward to this one so definitely one I want to get to in September. Then finally I have two modern novels. So here we have A Days at the Morisaki Bookshop by Satoshi Yagisawa um, and this is translated from the Japanese to the English by Eric Azawa. And this is a little short Japanese novel about um, a woman working at a bookshop. Um, so, you know, that sounds very up my street. I definitely want to try and read this in September. Then finally, I have Ghostlight by Joseph O'Connor. This is a bit longer. This one is um, just under 250 pages. And this is a work of historical fiction set in Dublin and London um, in the early 20th century. I think it's partly set at a theatre and follows sort of actors and playwrights. Um, and I hear good things. So... I might get to this in September, we'll see, but obviously my pile of possibilities is too long for me to read everything. So there we go, that's my pile of possibilities for Shorty September. Lots of different options, I'm sure I won't read them all, um, but I'm excited for them. I feel like I have lots of interesting things on that list um, and a bit of variation, which would be nice. So let me know down in the comments, are you going to take part in Shorty September? Have you read any of these books? Are there any you think I need to move right up to the top of my list? And that's all for now, thanks very much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Thank you.